Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. Today, you're playing the lottery with me. Now, the reason why this is kind of a big risk, I bought this as a used item off of Amazon. It's off of Amazon warehouse deals. Now, if you start going to look for this kind of deal yourself, I highly recommend you look for Amazon warehouse deals, not third party deals, and you can check and see who the seller is when you're doing this. What these are is they tend to be returns that come in and somebody at Amazon is responsible for grading what that is and then reselling it back um, as basically used inventory. First time I learned about this was back in 2018 when I bought this Burley Design solo trailer for $300. Now this at the time I think was around a $600 trailer and I saw that it was a used acceptable condition trailer and it was in perfect condition and we enjoyed that for well pretty much up until my daughter was able to ride a bike now this was one that uh was prior to today the largest gamble that i had uh taken which was this synology eight bay rack station that thing runs 1299 dollars and i got it for 889 dollars so i saved uh 400 on that i didn't see a single scratch on it it's been running for months totally fine and very happy with that purchase and i'll show you guys the largest amazon warehouse deal purchase that i've made to date hopefully this wasn't a terrible idea I ordered this Canon XA70. This is a $2,200 camcorder, but I did not pay $2,200. I paid $1,598 pre-tax, $700 off of the sale price currently, or if you look at retail for $2,499, I actually saved $900 dollars and 74 cents and the reason for this i know a lot of people don't like shooting on camcorders and as a matter of fact i'm shooting right now on a panasonic s5 ii now i am a gearhead it's part of gears and gadgets a lot of people shoot their youtube videos on gopros or cell phones that's all fine you can get away with doing that but i also have some other stuff kind of going on in the background here i've had to up my game in gear and i've been doing it very very progressively the way that i'm approaching this kind of new thing here is I'm just taking my time getting some gear ready for the potential of doing what it is I have. It'll be a future announcement. Going back to a Barrett Jackson video that I had done, Panasonic actually sent me out on loaner a HCX1, I believe is what it was. So recently I went out and bought the newest version of that, which is an HC, this is the X20 professional camcorder and i absolutely love this thing what i learned is that filming events are it's amazing on a camcorder you can do things that you just cannot do in real time with a dslr as recently as i was at sema i did carry this camcorder around and got some really great shots that i would not have been able to get as good on a DSLR because it's a lot harder to kind of get that longer focal length and, and be able to zoom in on things as you can with a camcorder. But this is really, really difficult to carry around at an event. It's, it's just unwieldy. So at the suggestion of Marcus Pix, this is the smallest, cheapest, lightest, most fun 4K camcorder that gives you the most pleasing look out of any camcorder you can get in the world. This is truly the best turn on and push record camcorder there is. He recommended this model. I bought it, I used it for like 10 minutes, took some video and I'm like, yeah, that ain't it either. So I needed something between, well, between something that is this size that I can throw in a bag and something that is this size that I really can't throw in a bag but gets fantastic video. So this is going to be more for the YouTube videos. Who knows what is in this box? The condition was used acceptable. So let's go ahead and see, did I make a big mistake? It's really honestly a pretty low risk but very high reward potential. Let's see what is in this box. You never know how this stuff is gonna be packaged. Did I get a good deal or it was this a giant waste of time? Let's see here. Hopefully it's in its original packaging. It's in another box, a box within a box. This definitely does not seem to be the original packaging. Thanks to you, this product has a second life. 
Amazon Warehouse, Amazon Renewed, and Fulfilled by Amazon. What is used acceptable? This is good. This is where you want to start seeing like accessories and things like that. So the lens hood appears as if it's never been opened. That's a good sign. Battery also appears never have to been opened. This is exactly what you want to see is cellophane type stuff that looks like it's never been opened. And I will also check an unboxing video on YouTube to see if this is how this stuff comes from the factory. A plug, yet again, taped closed, maybe never opened. We are doing really good so far. Of course, I will save the camcorder for last. We have one bad sign that I see. We'll get into that in a moment. This bag appears to not be opened and I can still see the twist tie on the um, cord here. We have a manual, so that's good. Toss the box to the side. I don't believe the camcorder comes assembled with the grip on here. So I do think somebody had this opened. The lens appears to be completely fine. That's obviously a giant component here. Is there plastic on the screen? All right, okay. We got some screen protector, that's good. Let's uh, let's take to YouTube real quick. Bala Ram official. Nope, looks like he's already unboxed this before the manual's opened. Interesting. Okay, so we're missing a lens cap. The handle does not come on it. Okay, all those bags do look the same. Okay, so a couple things to tell me that this camera was used to some capacity. This handle's on there to begin with because it doesn't come that way. So somebody took it out of the box and at the very least put the handle on it. Now I do not plan on using this handle. Let's take this off. We will pull this plastic off. Screen appears okay. So what are the odds that somebody bought this because they lost their lens cap and then returned it? I would say pretty low. I'm not super concerned about that because I will put this on. And this has its own cover on it. So um, I will leave that on there mainly because I hate lens caps. The fact that nobody opened this battery leads me to believe that somebody ordered this, threw the handle on it, and then just returned it. Camera on. January 20th. Okay, so somebody set the time. So somebody at least had this thing out and had set the time on it. I'm gonna do a factory reset and see how much of this was actually set up or does it just happen to know all of this? I, don't, I doubt it does. Okay, so somebody had done this because I just did a reset and it asks me for all this information. So somebody actually had this open and utilized it. All in, I mean, this thing seems to be, aside from missing the lens cap, seems to be all put together. It is recording, it is zooming, it is focusing. I don't know, to save seven to nine hundred dollars, it seems, uh, seems pretty good. So I've got uh, a couple hours down now. I kind of stopped filming the video because I wanted to just go and play with this thing, make sure that I wasn't prematurely celebrating a an absolute win here. And I've got to say, I do not see a single scratch on this thing anywhere. I see zero imperfections on this thing at all. And I've also done some uh, test shooting. It is working absolutely as intended. Again, not a single scratch or scuff anywhere on the entire camera. There's some fingerprints on the screen here for me. But again, uh, doesn't appear as if there is a single thing wrong with this, aside from missing a lens cap, which I don't even care because I would never use anyways. I would probably lose it. Um, it didn't appear as if any of these ports were ever utilized. Even the, uh, the handle, the door, everything's here. There's not a single thing on here that I would consider even remotely scratched. Basically, it just didn't have the original box, and that's what saved me. 700 to 900 dollars on a rather professional one inch censored uh camcorder which is 
pretty wild. Looking at this, I went out, I bought this camera based on that recommendation from Marcus Picks. I know why he recommended this, I get it. It is absolutely a great camera for your average person who just wants to run out and grab a great shot. I get why he enjoys these things because for him, he's finding joy in getting the most out of the cheapest technology. In real world practice, however, having the smaller sensor on this camera is going to affect low light performance dramatically. Yeah, you can play around with it in post, things like that, but if you need a camera to give you a great picture right out of camera, the one inch sensor, low light is going to be that much better and uh, just everything about it, honestly, is going to be that much better. I just don't see how for $800 to spend $1,500, yes, that's like twice the jump, um, and was certainly not really in the budget, but when you come to buy a tool, buying a tool that you're never going to use versus buying the right tool is something that is, it can be difficult to make that jump, but at times it's the right thing to do. This is one of those times. This is the camcorder that I'm going to use in those kinds of scenarios where I just wanna quickly throw it in a bag. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is a bag that I bought from 511. I guess I'll link all this stuff in the description down below. It doesn't look smaller, but because it's kind of like more of a cylinder than it is just this oddly shaped kind of thing, it's just easier to put it in a bag. So this will be my, my new go bag setup here. Now I've got a camcorder a small little drone, kind of hard to see in there. Camcorder, small little drone, and the drone controller. And now I just have a camera sling bag. If I go to like a Barrett Jackson or uh, SEMA, any of those kinds of big events, well now I can actually have my vlogging set up with me while also having a camcorder that's much more suited for capturing like the action stuff where something might be happening uh, you know, 50 yards from where you're at currently. And by the time you get there with this camera and try to get yourself up to the front, you can just kind of get up high with a camcorder, zoom in, capture what you're trying to capture, have that shot and kind of keep moving. So this is really the perfect setup that I was looking for of being a one man band going to these kinds of events. As somebody who does all of this stuff on my own, I do not travel with a camera person. I don't have a team. Uh, I try and I'm, I've been actively kind of working on like what is the best setup to have. So I know a lot of people watch this and they think like, man, this is so much expense in equipment. It is, absolutely is. But I would rather spend the money on equipment to continue doing it myself as long as I possibly can than I would to start paying uh, camera people to travel with me and do all of that extra stuff that comes along with that. So. I, for as long as I possibly can, want to continue doing this myself, and I will forever be looking for the right gear to kind of achieve that thing, and I think that um, I'm kind of heading in the right direction with it. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. If you guys want to see camera reviews or things like that, drop that comment down below as well. Remember, likes go a long way to support the channel, and I will see you guys next time.